Hey pals, welcome back to a new video. Today, we're going to be talking about the brand new, officially released A-Sprite 1.3 version. This version has the tile map feature, which uh, I was actually given access to as a beta about two years ago and made a video about it. Uh, and I've been using it since then, but seeing as though it's finally out of beta, I thought I would give you guys a bit of a recap video showing you kind of like my workflow for how I use this system and uh, give you a bit of a rundown of how it works as well. Okay, so let's get into it. So today what I thought I would do is show you kind of like the first part of my workflow for how I do tile maps in Insignia. All of my tile sets in Insignia, I start with a sprite, I move over to tiled where I create auto mapping rules, and then I build out the levels in tiled and import them into Unity. Then I go back and add kind of like additional layers and assets to create variations in a sprite, and I create additional rules to essentially fill those in. So we're going to cover just the a sprite part of that, and um, yeah, happy to show it to you. So. What I've got here is, uh, this is a sprite 1.3, and if you don't have 1.3, or at least if you hadn't worked with the themes in the past, uh, the new version comes with a default dark theme. If you go to the themes and click it, it's, it's available there now, and this is what I'm using now. So if you haven't been using dark themed a sprite, now's your chance. Um, so what I have here are a couple of screenshots. These are kind of like um, some mock-ups for one of the later sections of the game. And so there's very little work here that I've put into these outside of these mock-up screenshots. Um, there's some ideas about some enemies and I know kind of where this fits into the story, but I haven't really had a chance yet to uh, really flesh out levels with this look and feel. So what I thought I would do is kind of just show you my workflow. So the first thing I'll do is assess kind of what I want out of this. Um, I'd like for this to be a tile set that I can use as both inside and outside. So if I replace this whole background Right. Maybe uh, it would be possible for me to have like an outside level and um, that way we could have some diversity in the backgrounds without having to redo an entire tile set. Maybe it would be cool to kind of diversify, maybe have one or two different kinds of, of flat terrain, so either snowy or stone. And we could have some transition tiles to kind of ease the difference between the snowy tiles and the, the stone tiles. So. Maybe that's a good place to start. That's a nice approach. So the first thing I'll do is I have always got my character pinned in my quick access uh, file open recent and I, that way I can get him anytime I want. And this is really important because we want to see the character relative to the tile set. Okay. Then I might just like put a background down just for the sake of it. Uh, so we can name this background if you want and this can be player. Okay, so we know now that we've got two kind of separate things here Sometimes I'll even make this sort of semi-transparent and I'll link the layer as well This means that if I do additional frames um, It'll just be the same image Okay, and now we want a new layer So we want a new layer and this is going to be a new tile map layer So if you haven't been using a sprite 1.3 beta, this will be brand new for you and we can call this terrain um, by default 16 by 16 is going to be the same size as your grid background. So these squares are 16 by 16 pixels and typically you want to use the same. So this will be okay. And the first thing you notice is that there are now two palettes. The first palette is your actual colors, which you'd be familiar with. And the second one is your tile map palette. So this is a list of all the tiles that you've got. And since we've got an empty layer, there's nothing really on there. These buttons are the selection mode and then the actual brush or like edit modes for the tile map. If you're not selecting a tile map layer, you won't see them. So the first one essentially swaps the brush type from painting pixels to painting tiles. So if I take this one here, I can literally paint it multiple times or even, you know, we can grab, grab a couple or you can even select over a bunch of tiles. Yeah, we can copy them, we can paste them, move them over here. We can even maybe like grab these two here and start expanding. That also works and you'll notice that now that we've done that we haven't actually changed any of the indices okay so we've copied the tiles and if you hold control you can see one and one are the same tile right if we start with this mode here this manual mode whenever we update a tile that same index will be updated everywhere that it exists so here if we're trying to just modify existing tiles we're refining what we've got or playing with permutations, which I'll show you a bit later, then you basically just want to keep it in this mode here. If we're creating a tile set and we're adding new 
kinds of tiles. Let's say we wanted to add slopes as well. This will basically just add them automatically. So um, anytime, you know, we add a different slope, even if these pixels happen to be the same as those ones, right? So if I copy this and paste it over here and then make this different, it doesn't update back at the original position. Okay, so mode one will always update instances of the same tiles and keep them together. Version two will merge them if they're the same, but it'll let them diverge if they're different. If you manage to change something in one place, it won't update everywhere else, but it will add a new index for it. And version three always adds new indices. Okay, so it always adds new tiles. No matter what you do, it'll just create new ones all the time. Most of the time when I'm working, if I'm building out the actual tile set, if I'm drawing the base shapes that make up the set, okay, you know, all the different kinds of slopes and stuff, I'm in mode two. And if I'm testing out variations, I'm in mode one. So it's really like build is mode two, edit is mode one. That's how I think about it. So when it comes to making levels and maps in my game, what I typically do is I put my player kind of up in the corner and I will go into my tile edit mode and I'll grab the ones I'm drawing and I'll put them sort of next to him. And for this first square, I might make it a five by five. That lets me do corner tiles and um, repeating wall and surface tiles as a good base. So I'm here in tile map version two and I'll just add another little line here. The next really important thing is to determine kind of what the shape of this thing is going to be. So here, obviously it's a square, but do we have the colliders in the middle of the tile or on the edges of the tile? Typically you put them on the edges. So you want to think of the tiles as extending kind of like all the way to the edges. If your tile set is a lot simpler, you don't need to go quite this far with this, but um, I'll have like the edge tiles, inside edges, right? And then a black tile or like a complete null tile. And then I'll have all around the radius, okay? I'll have like aesthetics. So these are just kind of like visual, you know, grass or in this case, snow or something that's sitting kind of like behind the layer that we can grab onto. Okay, so if the character's kind of like, uh, I'll show you here. I'll, I'm pressing space tab to switch between the tile selection mode and the brush selection mode. So this is here, space tab toggles between them. So here we go, space tab. I'm gonna grab these here. And we're thinking about it as if the player is standing like on top of this stuff. Where the player is gonna be standing is how I'm drawing this kind of like lighter color. And then everything behind that is the darker color. If I was doing like a grass tile set, you know, the, the tall blades of grass would stand behind him. So we can still see the player very clearly, but we're getting some of that natural kind of like variance between the tiles in this layer behind. Okay, still on the same layer though. I actually have my player always on top of the tile set, in front of the tile set, not sort of between two layers. I did try that for a while, but it, it's kind of hard to manage. Now these aren't colors that I would use for the actual lighting, but I would use them just so that I know kind of where the thing is. If I was gonna do lighting, what, what I typically would do is I would have kind of like, if the collider ends right here, then what I'll do is I'll make it so that there's like a physical edge kind of like halfway in or like a third of the way into this tile here. So it looks like the player is kind of standing on a flat surface that then rolls off. So I'll show you what that looks like. What I'll do is I'll take this color here and I'll sort of start creeping in so that you get a better idea. And then maybe just for like appearances sake, I'll use a different color altogether for that sort of background layer. And then I'll swap this to be highlight. I'm using the shading tool here to give you that idea of where that highlight's going to be. And the shading tool, you know, you grab two colors and make sure you've got shading selected. So I've got some shortcuts to let me do that, but this helps me sort of just like to find that edge. And what I also will typically consider doing is kind of shifting all of this down by one on the underside. So the shading tool lets me do that very quickly. And you can see perspective wise, I've kind of got it not in a natural perspective, right? It's almost like um, the kind of terrain is like coming in towards the camera. But you could imagine, say, if we were on the very, very edge of the level, you know, 
then this looks like it's sort of like heading towards the horizon. So it doesn't super make a lot of sense if you can see both edges in like that. But when you've got longer, larger levels, it actually does work quite well. So oftentimes as well, I'll actually even bleed out a little bit further from where the character's standing here. So now it's like the player's standing directly on like the middle of this tile, even though that's where the collider is going to be. We know now that there's going to be a little bit of extra pixels kind of like behind him to show a little bit more depth. Okay. I don't really like making it so that my character is standing on a completely flat surface. I like to show a little bit of perspective. So that's what we're seeing here today. Okay. So that's not a bad start. So now we've got kind of like a mocked up kind of like tile layout and we can kind of think about this as being maintained like up here. And then down below, what I like to do is have like a play area where I build out new tiles and new configurations just to see if things work or if I want to add more variations to it. So what I'll typically do is I'll go into space tab, which is the tile selection mode, and I'll just copy this down somewhere else and it should snap if you're in the right mode. And then what I'll do is kind of just like build out another shape and try to do it like this, maybe even copy this, or drag it even, that works too. And I'll think about kind of like, okay, what if I want to sort of turn a corner in a concave way? This is all convex, right? So we're going outside of a shape, but what about like the inside of a shape? Um, another way you could think of doing that is if we made this like really tall. So let's see what happens if we cut out a hole, you know, yay big. And those are our, that's a three by three. That might be okay for our internal corners. Yeah, I think that'll work. So there are some little assumptions and rules we could make. We could do something like this. Okay, we know that's gonna be like that. And we could take this one here, and copy it back the other way. And then we can do the same thing with the verticals. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then that gives us something to trace on the inside. So here we've got like a corner, inside corner, inside, 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 and then again. So now we should be able to just trim off the edges and then this becomes our internal shape. You can just delete that now. And then fill this. Now we can go back to the tile selection, drag all of this and place it kind of here. To clean up this a little bit more, I'm just gonna grab this whole space, pick the red color that I want, go to the fill with contiguous off, and then just fill it all that way, nice and easy. So now we should have our convex and our concave tiles. Uh, it's not perfect, but we're just gonna see kind of like what we can get away with here. So I'm just gonna start selecting some shapes and I'm gonna see if I can create maybe like a curvy kind of like level section. So this is like one corner and now I wanna grab this corner and see if it connects up. Nice, very good. You'll also note that here, this internal space here is kind of identical to this one. So you can keep them or you can remove them. It's up to you. I typically like to have my shapes um, with like one spacer in the middle, but technically, because we're going to do a ground and a, t and a ceiling and walls later, these flat tiles here, we could get rid of them in the final tile set. So just shrinking these shapes in a little bit more. But for now, while we're mucking around, this is a good base. So yeah, we can grab this tile and we can start, you know, uh, dragging it over. Like this. And then we can start using this edge, maybe like over here, copy paste. And remember to be in tile mode one here while we're doing this. Maybe even like a, like a wall that looks like this on the edge. Cool. So super easy way to sort of mock up like a level space right just with the tiles that we've done so far and i'm actually gonna try to shift all of this now um, with the tile edit mode i just want to give myself a bit more space so go up a little higher up into the corner and then make way more space down the bottom so i can continue playing with this um, i think with this kind of work like it's really good to be able to have that that kind of freedom to really paint the tiles. I don't really believe in like mathing it out. 
I kind of would just prefer to, you know, draw out my guides and then paint and fix any of the inconsistencies later. Especially for Insignia, which is a very painterly game, you don't want it to feel like grids, right? Or at least I don't want it to feel like grids. If you were making like a sci-fi game, um, something with like more futuristic, manufactured, machined edges on all of your terrain, then for sure you would be doing pixel guides with a single pixel, you know, brush going at like 45 and 90 degree angles. But here, I kind of just want it to feel like it's a like it's a world that lives you know, in a natural way, but just rendered through a pixel art style. So let's keep going. I'm, I'm gonna grab all of these, holding shift, and just come down to a bigger space. And I might just also do the kind of like opposite of this. And this is kind of like a nice, yeah, like a nice playtest space, because we're using all of the tiles that we've made so far, but they're in lots of different scenarios. So I'm happy about that. So from here, like we could basically just, you know, stick to tile mode one, and just go to town. And here is where I would start sort of playing with ideas and colors that represent the space that I really want. Okay, so let's start just doing that. Uh, I've got lots of grayscale options here, so maybe I'll just go with contiguous turned off, make all of this color like that. This color is like that. A little brighter here, maybe much brighter on the very edges. We want it to feel a bit more like stone. Uh, I might still go a little... Mm, I might add another color for the top face. So like here, I might just go into my um, shader brush option and then just paint all of the top edge of this like that. And then the same thing here. And the same thing there. Same thing there. And because we're in tile mode one, that's updated in our actual base tile set. So this is all looking really good. Uh, and then I might dim down these ones here. So maybe drop them by two palette indices down like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. And then back here, let me think, what do I want to do with this? For now, Maybe, maybe I'll just take this and just erase it. So I'll just literally shade it into transparency for most of this stuff. I know I've got the space to do it later. You know, we can always add bits and pieces, but anywhere that's not like the top, I'm going to take this away. So now that I have like a basic layout done, um, I can start thinking about, yeah, the texture and looking at my references and making sure that I'm not like deviating too far off the path. So let's look at what we've got here and see what we can transfer over. I'm going to grab this tab and I'm going to dock it to the right. And that will let me look at both of these at the same time. Okay. Looks like I've got a bunch of new colors here and I'm using some blue to bridge the gaps between the ones that I um, don't have. I think that's a really nice technique there and I'd like to use it here as well. So maybe what I'll do is just use these same colors, copy, and then click on this and go over here, make a new index and press paste. So now I just grabbed all of those colors. I'm gonna lock the palette again, and I'm just gonna kind of like replace all the ones that I wanna see different. So at this point in the process, yeah, I'll literally just play with this until it looks like what I think looks good. We can start editing it up here and transition down once we've sort of textured in everything and see how it works. So I don't mind starting over here and just um, adding a bit of variety. I'm again going into my shade brush and I'm just going crazy with it. So this to feel kind of icy so I'm gonna make the contrast really high where I can right on these little edges see that those little specular highlights give it that look of being a little more sharp a little more glassy then we can look down here and just see how that's going 
So it's definitely, you know, gonna not repeat very well. And we can add variations to here to give it a bit more of that. But for now, I just want to keep playing with this to get the right kind of dimensions and shape. Maybe I want like a bit of an overhang. Bit of a snowverhang, if you will. And the snow being fluffier is a bit more rounded in its appearance. So it's not as sharp. We can kind of go, you know, darker on the bottom, brighter on the top. Whereas here we're going kind of like middle, brighter, darker immediately. That's the more contrast, the more sharp it looks. And just trying to dither this out a little bit. So basically, you know, areas where you see just beyond the first point of the dark color coming across, some more examples of the previous color, basically smudging that line a little bit. That way it's not quite as obvious what we're doing. Um, it, it's still a tile set, it's still gonna feel like one, but it's not so obvious that, okay, there's the division between one tile and the next. So since we were only doing the convex tiles before, in order to update the concave tiles to match, we can come back down here and just sort of like sew it up. So, you know, more just cleaning up the visuals to match how they look here. So here, just getting the general proportion right. And then even just, you know, we can mess around with that and make it feel like it's mostly in the same ballpark world. I'm not super fond of how like tiger striped this has become. So I'm going to start backing away in the lower areas and just let the top edge speak for itself. We might still have little bits and pieces of that, you know, in other areas, but not all the way across the tile set like that. So now that gives us a bit of a guide for how we want this to sort of work in those convex aspects. And, you know, I'm more than happy to just dot in colors here and there and just see where that takes me. Like you don't have to be super, you know, tessellated and super precise. You can kind of just draw stuff and then make it look better later. Okay, so the last big step here would be to take the areas where we're seeing lots of repetition, copy all of this, paste it over here, copy all of this, paste it over here. And here now we can work on turning that into a more varied space. So we want to go back to tile mode two, space two, and then we can essentially make this look as good as we want it to and not worry about anything else breaking because we're in a different tile mode. But then we can bring them back over once they're nice and clean. If it helps, you can even add the edge tiles in and that might just give you a bit of context. Make sure you're in tile mode too though. So your goal here is to really just minimize the amount of like uh, repetition that you've got across the whole thing. Just make it feel like a nice drawing. And then later on, you know, you'll use tile map rules in your tile system to kind of make sure that they all work correctly. But for now, I'm just drawing, you know, drawing what I like. Admittedly, like this isn't really like a pixel art tutorial, so I'm not going to teach you sort of like how to think about rendering light values like this. You know, it's kind of pushing into art class territory. Um, but if you learn something watching me do this, uh, let me know. I'm really just thinking about surfaces and how the light picks up on those surfaces for the most part. I'm also trying to use uh, as few details as possible, or at least only detail where I need it to be. So no, no pixels that do nothing. All of your pixels should do something. That's kind of like the definition of pixel art, right? And not just do the pixels have purpose, but do the shades have purpose? Would be the next question. So like, do I need one, two, three, four, five colors here? Can I kind of break this up? And maybe you only think about this at the edges. You know, maybe it's a good idea to have empty space if you don't want the player to look at those areas, right? There are places I really want you to look at, the edge of the tile, because that's where the collider is. I don't really need you looking at this. So maybe it's better to just uh, kind of go for less is more. And making sure that we're consistent with those textures, right? We had that glassy edge right on the corner. 
Just thinking about the opportunities where it makes sense to bring that back. And this is all looking really good. Very nice. So the idea now is to return back to that tile mode one, grab some of these tiles and see how they look back in the context. And try to use them at random and just see if they work. Just drop them straight in. I think that's looking really nice so far. There's a lot more I could do on the underside of these. You know, we're looking at things like, um, you know, stalagmites and stalactites and stuff like that, like cave, cave-esque structures. You know, maybe even thinking about reaching down towards the player. We maybe want to avoid the idea that these are stage hazards, right? Things that could actually hurt you. But there's probably stuff that we could do here to make this feel nice and um, snowy, cavey. So what we've got here is, you know, still very much early days. I mean, having done this much in like an hour of recording, um, it's quite good progress. Typically, I would spend, you know, up to a week on a tile set like this, you know, including foreground assets and backgrounds and all the kinds of different variations we would see. But I think I've given you a pretty good understanding of my process. So starting out with the geometry, then separating that out into blocked out shapes, expanding those shapes down into like a preview area, and then finding the points of repetition, taking those points of repetition back up into the tile set and adding variations and then bringing them back down to the preview. So this then gives us a workflow where, you know, inside of Aceprite, we're working with the tile set and we're working with, you know, a kind of level preview um, in a way that allows us to very naturally build out the tile set. Okay. And this is all thanks to those features that we've been looking at here in Aceprite 1.3. Over the next little while, I'm going to continue working on this because I'm at a point in Insignia where I'm getting very close to approaching publishers and doing some kind of like production stuff, um, looking towards maybe even crowdfunding. So it'll be nice to have a lot of diversity that I can show off of what already exists of the game. So I'm very excited to share that with you very soon. Look forward to Steam page, maybe a Kickstarter, maybe more of a reveal or a trailer in the next little while. Okay. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hey pal, thanks for watching, and thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button, and then YouTube will tell me, and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again, and uh, until next time.